Hey, physical science peeps. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to work with the periodic table and with the different subatomic particles in order to fill out some atom tables, I call them. All right, we're going to be looking at a little more this next week. But in case you want to try some of these on your own, here's a nice uh, video for you to just check out and to, you know, take some initiative, try some of these things out. So on today's Power School page, you can open up the Atom Tables Practice and Homework. I'm going to go over the practice ones with you. All right, the homework obviously is on your own, but when you open it up, you should look like this. And again, the beauty of video is you can pause it, rewind, fast forward, whenever you want, okay? So if, some, if one part is weird, you couldn't understand me at one part, rewind it, obviously. Okay, so here's our periodic table. I have a bunch of important information, uh, or some important information, uh, down towards the bottom here. But when you have the periodic table again, um, you could use this one that's on the document. You can even use the one on the ptable.com website. All right, this one you can, you know, click around all the different elements, but you have one visible available uh, right here. The top number is the atomic number. That's the number of protons in your atom. All right, that's the straight up definition of atomic number, protons in your atom. I also have some other important information down here. We, we went over this stuff all uh, in class, but it's all right here as a reminder for you. All right. So mass number is protons plus neutrons. We did that in class. If you have the mass number and the protons and you want to figure out neutrons, you just do some simple subtraction. You get your neutrons. Protons are positive. Electrons are negative. And about the ions then, if your protons and electrons are equal, that means you have a neutral atom. So your charge is negligible. There is no charge. If you have more protons, you have a cation. Remember, cations have pause, positive charge, or cations. Anions are like onions. They make you cry if you cut them, you slice them. Anions are negatively charged due to an extra amount of electrons. So for the practice table down here, it might look kind of weird. But all we're doing is we're trying to basically fill in all the blanks here, given the information that you know. So what I want to do is I'm going to do a few rows together with you, maybe like the top row and then uh, maybe this row over here. Um, and then I'm going to go fast forward through the rest of them and you can kind of see what the final answer should be for the practice table. But again, you need to make sure you have your periodic table. So scroll up and use this one or use the one on the uh, ptable.com site, or any website or any ptable you have available. <laughs> if yours is in your living room, you can look up at your living room and look at your ptable. That's what I can do if I were in my living room. All right, so nitrogen 14. Nitrogen 14. So what we talked about in class was that the second number here, this is actually your mass number. So every atom, uh, has a name to it, obviously. So this one is nitrogen. The second number here is going to be your mass number. So what we're going to do is type in 14 as the mass number. And you see it here in the symbol as well, N14. The number here signifies how many protons and neutrons you have in your atom. The element is nitrogen. So what I need to do is look on my periodic table for nitrogen. And the number in the corner, the atomic number, I'm going to put right here. So let's do that. Where's nitrogen? Where's nitrogen? Bingo! Right there. It's like hide and seek, but a little easier than hide and seek. There's nitrogen. Seven. Check that out. Seven is the atomic number for nitrogen. So I'm going to plop that right there. The definition of atomic number is the number of protons. So there you go. Seven protons. That's the atomic number. Number of neutrons, ooh. Well, if I go up here to my important information, mass number equals protons plus neutrons. Huh. So this one, you might need to do a little bit of math or just think about it critically. If my mass number is 14, that means these two boxes have to add up to 14. 
So it's kind of like, okay, what plus 7 equals 14? Well, it's 7. 7 neutrons plus 7 protons equals your mass number. Cool. That's how it's always going to be. It's always going to be these two boxes, these two boxes, these two boxes add up to your mass number. So it's kind of nice. And you're going to see that trend going down. All right. Humans are really good at picking up on patterns. It's called evolution. That's how we humans evolved into being uh, as smart as they are, as smart as we are, I guess. Pattern recognition. That's one thing that humans have kept through all the years. All right. The overall charge of this atom is zero. All right. So the atom is neutral, you could say. So yeah, since it's a zero charge, I'm going to call this a neutral atom. Ooh, perfect. It fits. Again, if it was positive, it'd be a cation. If it's negative, it would be an anion. But no charge, so it's, it's, uh, it's neutral. Cool. So the number of electrons, last thing. Let's go up back up here. If the number of protons equals the number of electrons, then it's a neutral atom and you have no charge. That's because your electrons are negative and your protons are positive. So like we showed in class, if you have if you if you take 7 steps forward and 7 steps backwards, you end up nowhere, which is what your charge is. 7 electrons. And that is a nitrogen 14 um element. There we go. Cool. All right. Let's do uh, this, uh, this one. Let's do this one. All right. This 1429 one down here. So if you're given the name and the symbol, you can pretty much figure out the rest by just kind of going in order. But if you're not given the name or the symbol and you have, you're given this other information, we got to try to figure out using a different method. So first, it's kind of like a weird, kind of like a weird puzzle, like a brain teaser. Try to find out what to do first. So I look at the atomic number because that tells me so much about what I am working with. Because the definition of atomic number is the number of protons. Well, there we go. I guess I have 14 protons in my atom. And like we said earlier, the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So if I know the mass number is 29 and the protons are 14, well, these two have to add up to 29. Well, math tells me that 15 is the empty number here. 14 plus 15 equals 29. Yay, math. Use a calculator if you need to. I'm not going to force you to do mental math, but if you can, do it. All right, so I got to figure out what element I'm using. What element has an atomic number of 14? This is where I go up to the periodic table. Look for number 14, element 14, 14, donde esta, where are you? Bing, 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 there you go. Element 14, C, I found it, silicon, number 14. Here we go. So I'm going to type in silicon. <clears throat> Oops, I'm going to do silicon 29. Because that is my mass number. And if you see up here, my mass number is going to go after my element name. It just, it's just good to put the mass number there because the mass number is different for pretty much every atom. Every atom's got a bunch of different kinds of mass numbers. So it's good to plop down what it is. So silicon 29. The symbol for silicon is SI. And I'm going to put 29 there. And look, we're already uh, almost done. Overall charge. Okay. Now again, we can't do the uh, this row until we get the charge because it can either be cation, anion, or neutral. So what we see here is that the number of electrons are 16. And the number of protons is 14. Okay. So, oops. So think about this. 16 negatives, 14 positives. So my question here is, what is in excess? What is, what, what is there more of? Well, there's more electrons. How many more electrons? Two. There's two more electrons than protons. 
this charge is going to be a negative two because you have two more negatively charged electrons than you do positively charged protons. Therefore, it's a negative two charge. In our notes, negatively charged ions are called anions because negative onions crying negative stuff, apparently. Whew. Okay. If that was too fast, rewind, um, check through it again. I'm going to run through these last three rows, kind of fast forward through them. Um, you, I, if I were you, I would maybe try them out and see how you do before you check and see what I get. Okay. Because if you know the answers beforehand, it kind of just, it helps you out when you do them. But a good study tool or study, study, uh, you know, yeah, a good study tool is to do it yourself. Give it a shot, use your resources, and then check the answers afterwards just to see, all right? Check yourself so you don't wreck yourself later. So take some time, check uh, or do these three rows, and then check and see what I get, all right? But I'm going to go fast through them. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Okay, there we go. So check mine out, all right? Please reach out if it's a little weird. Again, I'm just letting you know, we are going to go through a couple more next week. Give the homework a shot though, okay? If you feel pretty confident in your abilities to fill out some of the tables, don't freak out too much about it. Everything is there. I think some of the hardest parts might be the number of electrons or the charge based on um, how you feel about positives and negatives, but take your time through it. Um, check the, if you got the practices correct and you didn't check my answers, uh, cool. If you got any wrong and you really want to, uh, figure out what you did wrong and why it's wrong, reach out to me or we can wait till next week, but give the homework a shot. Okay. Um, have a good one. Bye everybody.